Good afternoon. I'm Francis Levy. Edna Session and I are co-directors of the Philip Tatey Center, and welcome to Asking the East, and we're so happy to have Jane Ira Bloom back again. Uh, and we wish to thank the New York State Council on the Arts and the Department of Cultural Affairs for the, some of the funding for this project. Uh, before we begin this afternoon's event, I just wanted to make a couple of announcements. Uh, the art you see on the wall is part of an exhibit uh, called Portraiture, Old Masters and New, um, and it's curated by Hallie Cohn with the assistance of Adam Ludwig, and uh, you'll see Philip Perlstein's work here on the right, David Pettibone, Phyllis Herfield, Jenny Dubnow, and Matthew Miller. Uh, film at Philoctetes continues on March 25th with a screening of great masterpiece Charlie Kaufman's Synecdoche. If you haven't seen it, come. And if you've already seen it, you should see it again and study it. And uh, we will be having a discussion after that with Arthur Heiserman, adjunct assistant professor at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, and Mara Spiegel, who teaches literature and film at Columbia. On April 2nd, we have the first of two events that will be occurring at New York University, and it's part of our outreach program by which we're trying to bring Philoctetes to other institutions in the area. And that program is uh, Realism and Expressionism in the work of Tennessee Williams. It's on the 100th anniversary of Williams's, uh, this year is the 100th anniversary of Williams's birth. And the famed uh, experimental director, Lee Brewer, from, for those of you who may know Mabu Mines, will be amongst the panelists along with Roger Copeland from Oberlin. Uh, on May 7th, we again go to NYU for uh, another of our uh, big question series, and it's Theories of Meaning and Motivation on May 7th at NYU. April 26th, poetry continues at Philoctetes with Wallace Stevens' Words That Matter. And on May 14th, poetry scholars and poetry critics are represented with um, actually Stephen Burt, who's a brilliant critic from Harvard. <laughs> Heather Dubnow is returning, Eric McHenry, Rachel Hadas is returning, and Bonnie Costello. Um, lastly, uh, all Philip Tatey's events are simulcast, as I think most of you know. So if you're at home, like right now, you can see a Philip Tatey's event by going to philiptatey's.org. And all of our past programming is available by going to philoctetes.org and looking at the left side of our home page where it says past programming. It also can be seen on YouTube. And in a few days, this particular program will be up on the site and it will be on our YouTube site also. I'm now pleased to present Jane Ira Bloom. Uh, Jane. <laughs> She's been here many times. She's a soprano saxophonist, composer, and a pioneer in the use of live electronics and movement in jazz. She is the winner of the 2007 Guggenheim Fellowship in Music Composition, the 2007 Mary Lou Williams Women in Jazz Award. I feel I should get an oxygen tank when I have to install these. Stuff. Uh, uh, where are we? A uh, Woman in Jazz Award for Lifetime Service to Jazz, the Jazz Journalist Association Award, the Downbeat International Critics Poll for Soprano Saxophone, and the Charlie Parker Fellowship for Jazz Innovation. Bloom was the first musician commissioned by the NASA Art Program and has, has an asteroid named in her honor by the International Astronomical Union. Uh, she has recorded and produced 14 albums of her music and has composed for the American Composers Orchestra, the St. Luke's Chamber Ensemble, and the Palabolas Dance Theater, integrating jazz performers in new settings. Bloom is currently on the faculty of the New School for Jazz and Contemporary Music at NYU. Her latest release is the critically acclaimed CD, Wing Walker. And by the way, that CD, Jane, and, and uh, other CDs along with CDs from all of the performers will be available for sale right after, so everyone can go, uh, I think we'll have them for sale here in the center of the room. Here, yeah. Right over there. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I'm very pleased to, to have Jane uh, here again, and she will moderate this afternoon's performance discussion. Go ahead, okay. Jane. I think as we usually do, music first. Music first. <laughs> Let's play.
That was a, a, a original composition that I wrote years ago for um, Min and, and Jin uh, called White Bird. But let, let me just take a second and thank uh, everyone for being here today, this gorgeous day. Um, and especially to thank these extraordinary virtuosi musicians who are joining me today uh, from many parts of the world. Uh, please welcome Samir Chatterjee on tabla. Min Xiao Fen on pipa and voice. <laughs> Jin Hee Kim on Komongo. Can you hear me okay? I don't, do I, I don't need to stand up, okay. Well, you know, uh, I, I remember doing a program like this uh, earlier on a few years ago, and I remember saying to Francis and Hallie that in a sense for musicians uh, from different musical traditions, coming together to play together is not dissimilar from the concept of the uh, round table discussions where uh, so many uh, intellectual thinkers from so many different fields get together to have a conversation together. Uh, this is actually the first time, uh, well, the second time Samir and I have had a chance to play together. And I have some history playing some with Min and Jin. But um, I thought it would be interesting. Uh, obviously, you know, we're four musicians who are from very divergent uh, musical worlds, but who have had a great deal of experience uh, collaborating with musicians who are not from our musical cultures. And beyond the obvious <laughs> of our different instruments and where we come from, I thought it would be interesting for us to, to play and talk a little bit about the difficulties <laughs> that we have doing this kind of thing, so you know, <laughs> uh, to start with. And also, basic concepts of, of how, from the different musical cultures that we come from, how we think about the most basic concepts of the parameters of music, perhaps in different ways. And to, to me, perhaps the most interesting thing to begin talking about, maybe, is um, how our music worlds perceive of the, the rate of change, the passage of time, and how that relates to how we express musical ideas. And, and I'm, I'm going to pass this over to Jin He, brilliant composer, Kamongo artist. Um, who's thought a lot about this very topic. <laughs> yes, certainly time sense has changed uh, in the <clears throat> right now contemporary time. And also, when you deal with the music in Indonesia, and when you do that in the West, the time sense is really, really different. For instance, um, in Japan and China, I think, the time, in, in traditional way, time was wide open, very, very uh, <coughs> elastic. That elastic idea still exists in Korea and in India. Still, we have rhythmic cycle, right? Yeah, we do have a rhythmic cycle. And in Indonesia, they have a rhythmic cycle, but then they have a multi-layer they are dealing with, polyphonically. So <coughs> that elastic time sense it's a problem when it comes to the West. Because the West, they want to count the absolute beat. And I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to put spices on the notes. We have only five notes. You got 12, whatever. <laughs> you got five. The way I'm making music beautifully is that manipulating each note, put the Korean spices in each one. <laughs> Then I need the time. When you count like this, I can't do any spices here. <laughs> That's the problem for me. <laughs> Space. <laughs> um, Meditation as well. Then energy, inner side also. I think, you know, the, I think the example is that 
Okay, here you have a portrait, the human front of everything. When you go back to Asian, especially Chinese or Korean, they, they draw person's face very small and then behind the big mountain here. <laughs> so they think that the, the human being is part of the nature, big universe, and here human is front. So then your energy is always out. In Asia, energy is in. So I don't do too much in here, but I have to take my energy out. That's my role to be a musician. Let's, let's, let's swing to the other side and ask Samir. Thank you, Jeannie. Well, in the concept of time, yeah, it's true that uh, Indian music, uh, the moment we get into rhythmic compositions, we are uh, taking up the cyclic pattern, the Tala cycle. And that applies to both uh, North Indian music and South Indian music, classical and popular folk, all sorts of music. We pick up um, a cycle of a certain number of beats divided in a particular bar pattern. And there's this also interesting system of clapping or not clapping on certain bars. All of these um, express the inherent rhythmic feel of the cycle, but at the same time also connects us uh, to an eternal concept of time. And uh, looking at this cyclic pattern and the linear pattern that we have here in the West, I've been thinking in the last uh, few years that whether any of these two at all make any sense. Uh, when we uh, look at time from the perspective of eternity. Because uh, if we accept the fact that uh, everything repeats, then there is nothing linear. And uh, when we are talking about cycle, we emphasize the fact that we start from one, go to the end of the cycle, and come back to the one. But the question is, do we come back to the same one? We don't. So um, none of these two concepts actually make any sense. Um, these are all um, created concepts to capture or to uh, cognite or um, perceive time in our own convenient ways. All units, measurements of time, for that matter, um, is from that sense of convenience. And if we are ever able to uh, step outside the hemisphere of this planet, uh, all of these concepts of 24 hours, week, month, year, dissolve immediately. So looking at that, we perhaps may acknowledge that uh, time is related to space. That opens up another area of thought, perhaps. But uh, time, in no matter what way we perceive it, can be a discipline, but at the same time a freedom. As I personally have experienced, you know, when I teach uh, or um, expose someone to the rhythmic cycle, they feel so restricted. Oh, this is it. I have to keep on repeating. And as she was emphasizing that it's all um, uh, kind of uh, in, the, in the oriental culture of uh, studies and uh, expression, it's more a sort of a vertical journey as opposed to being horizontal, that we go gradually inward. So if you keep on repeating the same thing over and over again, you start seeing new possibilities. And that's the idea. For some people um, who have not experienced uh, the complexity of um, the rhythmic world, 
that uh, someone like Samir lives in. Could you demonstrate a rhythmic cycle and uh, how complex it can get? Uh, some of the most uh, common ones. Yes, it, for just for. Um, cycle of 16 beats, as I was mentioning um, about the <coughs> clapping and not clapping system. If you count the 16-bit cycle, you would uh, count like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And now this cycle enjoys tremendous amount of elasticity in terms of tempo. So you can be one, two, three, four, or it can be one, two. So that's uh, one of the cycles. I will play in medium tempo. can also be vocalized. Da, din, din, da, da, din, din, da. Na, din, din, da, da, din, din, da. In the faster tempo, it will sound like this. And when you take up a tempo like, uh, a cycle like that, you create different um, metric modulations and uh, overlapping, all different, and endings, which are also very interesting, the Tihai thing, uh, where we take up a phrase and repeat it three times to create an ending. As I was ending my solo, that mm -hmm. was the Tihai. So, Cycle of ten beats, um, two, three, two, three. D, na, D, D, na, D, na, D, D. One. Seven-beat cycle. Pin, pin, na, di, na, di, na, na. Thank you. cycle and then there are also cycles uh, of half beats uh, seven and a half Actually, it may add up to 15. Mm -hmm.
And on each of these numbers, there are multiple um, tiles. For example, this was one example of 14. Another example of 14, very lilting, lilting sound and rhythm. to different categories or styles of uh, music. These are some of the, you know, the lots of other tiles, 17, 19, 15. <laughs> this is 15. Pancham Savari. And uh, in 14, the first style I played is called Dhamar. The second one is called Dipchandi. There is also Arachul Tal. So these are all... Um, Seven bits was Rupak, and uh, Jhap Tal was ten bits. In ten bits, there is another Tal. Different um, group structure, and what we refer to as Theka. And uh, so the character, of the you know, that's another aspect of musical expression, that when we take up uh, the melodic uh, element, the raga and the tala, what are the possibilities we can create out of the uh, materials given to us to create our own expression. So uh, each tal has its own personality, own character that you try to bring out through to the... And I, I just wanted to give people a sense, you, you have a sense of the complexity of the rhythmic vocabulary and world that his music works in and and use of space mm. so so uh, different mm -hmm. from what yeah uh, it's Korean time uh, cycle I mean you're playing kind of a fast one we have a very very slow one it's like one you can count two three Four, five, very slow, six, seven, eight, nine, <coughs> ten, eleven, twelve. We it's have a that, cycle. yeah, that's, that's a long cycle, I mean, very, very spacious. Let me demonstrate the Indian equivalent sure. of that. The one I was playing in 12 beats, so this is interesting how they all come from the same human mind. Yeah, this is what I was playing earlier as uh, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-se
Seven. Mm -hmm. Even slower. Mm. Four. Two. Three. Four. Two. Four. So this is how the cycle will go. And I am not just demonstrating or making things up on the spot. This is the cycle which is most popularly used in the classical singing known as khayal. This is called bilambit ektal. And that's what they use all the time, even in today's music. From people, to people's ears, the feeling of the passage of those rhythms and the metabolism that goes with them, it, it, uh, there's a feeling of asymmetry to it, yeah. although, although it's not. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Somehow when I was listening to it, I was thinking of Wayne Shorter. <laughs> um, someone who, when they improvise in a harmonic and, and metric situation, make melodies feel as if they're co coming um, in completely unanticipated ways with use of space. Anyway, well, we have, we have to shift gears here because now <laughs> Min's, yeah, Min, Min's going to talk to us. Uh, uh, oh, well. <laughs> Uh, because mm. the elasticity of time is something uh, that's tremendously important, you know, in, in Chinese music and, and the meditative. Uh also, silence is part of uh, yes. music too. Please. So, and uh, I agree with uh, Azu Jane. Mm -hmm. She's, she's uh, yes, almost a, sim a lot of similarity with you know Korean music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The Indian word uh, I forgot to mention uh, for time is kal. And kal uh, is not just in the sense of uh, uh, percussions or um, music alone. Kal is the broad uh, term used for time. And that leads us up to mohakal, which is mega time or the universe, time of the universe. And that's what exactly had, I have been, you know. I just mentioned in, when, in the opening remark mm -hmm. that whether or not uh, I mean, we just needed this concept of time to you know, <laughs> be on this planet and have things tangible around us. Otherwise, we'll be lost, completely lost. You know, what day it is, what <laughs> date it is, <laughs> what time it is, we need to know. <laughs> Otherwise, we're completely lost. Uh, but. Uh, whether or not in the, they in the West time is money, but in the West time is in the in the Asia time is free. That's why it's like that. <laughs> but then maybe, maybe you could talk to uh, because the use of space is is so primary to, to traditional Chinese music. The uh, concept of space uh, silence being a positive energy as well in the music. I'm sure you can. Uh, especially uh, in Chinese traditional music, uh, we always emphasize um, soft, but not weak, strong, but not aggressive. So always uh, kind of uh, looking for the, the balance, the in the middle way to, to, to play the music. So. Uh, for example, let me play a little bit uh, traditional, just a just, just couple of phrases for you. You will hear the silence and you hear the phrase, um, the brace, you know.
people Thank see <laughs> when when she's <laughs> can, oh, it's a, it's just marvelous? Can you see that when she's creating sound that there is a flow to every note? If you follow her hand, you can see that there's energy. Even when you slow down, when you speed up, it's it's almost like painting. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, perhaps, uh, you know, the older I get, <laughs> the fewer notes I find I've been playing. <laughs> but one thing, if I've learned anything from spending some time uh, being around uh, musicians from uh, other musical cultures, um, the thing I've learned about slowing down my own m melodic metabolism, and I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a small example. I've, I've always been a ballad player. I love ballads from the American Songbook. Um. <laughs> Melody, but the thing that our music has uh, is it's imbued in a world of harmony. <laughs> so the expression of these melodies also are given life by a huge and rich harmonic world that uh, has many equivalents in other musics of the world, but is very important to ours, you know, and how, how we express uh, what's in them. Well, we've done a lot of talk. Maybe we should play something. What should we, should we play? Uh, yeah, should we do this? Should we do one of the more uh, abstract pieces, or should we? Huh? The garden? Maybe. It's since we're talking about uh, different metabolism and use of space, let, let's uh, perform this composition of Genhees. Can you talk about it a little bit? Sure. Mm -hmm. This was uh, composed in 1999 and never performed again. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and this is the second time. And uh, when we performed at the Asia Society in 1999, I wrote a piece for, I mean, it's not really completely composition. It's uh, structured for the improvisers. And it was written for Japanese flute, Yoko Bie. And the Min Chao Fan was playing, and I was playing. And there was a uh, gamelan player was there, too. So I thought, we can try this structure with a different set. <coughs> so what happened? So I ask Jane, say, get some Asian superior or whatever. Eat more rice. <laughs> more <You> rice. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what we are going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very uh, against that absolute time. It's going to be open space here. Okay.
Next time this piece will be again performed will be 12 years later. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe something that uh, you should know about, uh, because uh, we did get together to, to, to try to find musical common ground that we could play for you. And uh, Key Center was a big, big issue. <laughs> the, the open strings, Jinhee, are on the Kamongo. Originally, it's B flat and E flat, but they don't have it. But, <laughs> but men's open strings. A, B, E, A. They don't go. I mean. <laughs> uh, actually, my instrument is a, it's a chromatic scale. But, you know, without open string, if I only play like a B flat, those are, it's, uh, it's very uh, unpleasant. To play. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to. And for me, it's yeah. very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I've been just uh, following their pitch on yeah. my ear, Should not by right. <laughs> the, the key that we found was A, right? Right, yeah. right? A. Mm -hmm. And then Samir emails me, well, we have a tabla in C or D. Um, and D, fortunately, is the fifth of A. Yeah. <laughs> because the common key that we found was A. If, you, if you've noticed, some of the pieces are leaning in this direction. Uh, but you have to understand that uh, as we are, are you know, trying to find musical common ground, none of us are completely comfortable. <laughs> Jinhee is picking notes out of the air on the kabongo. <laughs> These do not exist, some of the notes it's that she's in, playing. It's not you have to use ear. <laughs> yeah. She's and way it's out of her zone. My goodness, you know, Min has been playing my music for a while, so she's being pushed to her limit in terms of chrom uh, chromaticism. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, in, in her key. And the notes you were finding on your instrument, tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. I, you know. I, I grew up listening to the non such recorded world music series <laughs> when I was a kid. So I have no formal knowledge of uh, any of these musics of the world, but have enjoyed listening to this music and internalizing it in whatever intuitive way I can as an improviser. Um, just a lot of listening and hanging out with musicians like this. Um, so if you hear it, you will get it. <laughs> it's, yeah, I didn't grow up with it, but it, it, to me, there's so many things that we do that sound to me like blues from many, many cultures. <laughs> um, the expression, for, you know, for example, uh, in, uh, let's go around. Let's just go around the four of us. <laughs> the expression in each culture when you're playing music, what is what is the height of when you're playing something to show to an audience depth of emotional expression. Oh, deep, that's... deep, deep. C wanna cry. <laughs> but that's the uh, spicy. So, <laughs> spicy. <laughs> when you go to southern province, I came from Seoul, capital. When you go to southern pro province, their food is very hot. <laughs> and they do, um, I do maybe, they do this. Oh, yeah. They do okay. this. Oh. I mean, it's an incredible vibration coming out of it. It's oh. spicy. Mm -hmm. And if you make that strong spices, you become a virtuoso. Mm -hmm. And then make the spice different from you, mm -hmm. your teacher. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Mm -hmm. So when I learned uh, <coughs> the Komungo, I asked my teacher, how much should, should I bend? Oh. Mm. How much should I do this? How much should I do? How much do this? He said, you will learn when you get older. <laughs> OK. <laughs> How deep you go? How deep you go? How deep you go? OK. Let's, let's switch. Min, Min. I mean, the, the, depth, the depth of, of, of expression in, in Chinese music culture. No, no, you, you, we'll, we'll get to him. We'll get to him. I mean, you could, vocally or with people, maybe vocally. You could, you could either demonstrate or... Vocally. Yeah, yeah we have uh, many regions of the style of the uh, music. And of course, for vocal, uh, north, south. Um, yes, I, I found out very differently. It's south is more 
uh, the, the, the music, the melody is more gentle, more um, just like a, like a food, like a food mm -hmm. is more sweet. And uh, I'm from the southeast in the Shanghai region, so the, the food, the music is more sweet and the more uh, melody, more, um, more inner, how to say, expression. But north, northern, let's say, talk about northern, because northern has a very harsh, um, uh, the, uh, geographically, it's very harsh. So they, uh, the, the, the musician or the music is, you need a um, kind of more, um, let's say, salty or maybe spicy and also because of the harsh harsh environment then the music must uh, the style of the music must be um, sing louder and also uh, more um, uh, how to say is a kind of hard feelings because the weather because the Could you demonstrate it? oh yeah okay let's the, say the difference okay what's the difference is you have if I say sing the the uh, northern style is Qing Xia Shen in Agana Xia Xia La Ga Yang Yang Di Tsai. This kind of feeling. But no, uh, south, south style, you know, my, my region um, is more. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's totally it, different. Even with its <laughs> southern style, yeah. I know your music. Yeah, it has a very, very wide emotional range. Yes. <laughs> yes. So even within your own style, if you were to want to communicate to an audience something deep. Deeply. Deeply. How do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> uh, well, whatever. Just uh, as a, uh, since I've been in America, before my music is more, um, how to say, is more uh, balanced. Just uh, not, uh, just like before I said, it's um, a weak, uh, sorry, it is soft, but it's not a weak. Um, um, uh, strong, but it's not as uh, aggressive. But uh, come to America, uh, I studied with a lot of different musicians, classical musicians, uh, you know, like jazz musicians, you, and also a lot of modern music. So they emphasize a lot, of, especially for modern music, emphasize a lot of uh, you have to be aggressive. So uh, you can't hide, you have to be let go. So this is why I. I still kept some kind of uh, uh, inner feelings when I sing, when I play, but also I let, I let it go. I let it go than before. I try to be uh, self, more self-expression uh, than, than before. Yeah. So. I'll play the moment just a little open improv. I'll play a little yeah, bit improv. A little open uh, improv. For example, I, I adopted a lot of uh, techniques, uh, let's say the sound from from the guitar player or, you know, I use a lot of tools because, uh, you know, I try to make a different song. Slide, yeah, so like slide, slide guitar, guitar so guitar. like a... <laughs> Yeah, so when I, you know, for example, when I go home to uh, go, chi go back to China, if I play something like this, my teacher will kill me. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is a, this is a different way to, to approach my, my music now, yes. It's the same kind mm -hmm. of thing on me too, mm -hmm. that the way Komungo, especially Komungo was a court instrument. So you can imagine in court, you don't even express your feeling. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they played very elegantly. Mm -hmm. And very, and then when you cross the string from here to third one, very slightly. Now, because Americanized now, that I can go. <laughs> I use all those sounds. Sometimes I making that as a texture. Or I can do even here. You might just do one at a time, or sometimes. So usually one at a time, and I go here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, the 
This is aggressiveness. Yeah. 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 And it's very American energy. Yeah. yeah. And that's not actually a traditional Korean way of playing, but I'm adapted to that energy, especially New York energy. <laughs> so, 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 you know, we compromise yeah, and all the both way and mm-hmm. yin and yang. So. Yeah, 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 yes. Okay, now we've got to talk to Samir now. All right, you're, you're playing a, a solo in a concert, Samir. Well, uh, let me... Uh, How do you make him cry? <laughs> 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 what to in, in Indian People music, cry for different reasons. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you can How do you make want to feel, I can't do it. They can cry. <laughs> oh, this is so beautiful. They can cry. So, um, <laughs> so basically, um, what I was um, taking it at a deeper level. Um, the term we use for musical sound is nada. And in Indian music, in Indian philosophy, we have recognized two types of sounds, musical sounds. One is ahatanad, another is anahatanad. Struck sound that we all hear, and anahatanad, which is uh, meant for uh, only a few special. If you, through your music, can help your audience at any point in your life, mm-hmm. it will be naturally just one moment or maybe one or two moments. If you can help them to hear the anahatanat, then uh, that is the deepest moment that you can ever attain through your music that they hear music even though there is no music. As Miles said, the most beautiful part of my music is in between the notes. Mm -hmm. When you are not playing, but they are hearing it. So um, that is still uh, maintained in in Indian concept as the deepest moment of musical experience. Mm. So I, uh, when I solo, Although I'm playing a percussion instrument, but I use it as a musical instrument. And uh, in my solo demonstrations, I try to present it almost like a vocal performance. And uh, this is what I always wanted to do. The reason I play the tabla is also that in 1982, when I came out for the first time on tour with the great sitar maestro, Nikhil Banerjee. And I was with him in England for three months. And there was one occasion when I asked him, you know, you have this beautiful instrument, sitar, in your hands. And you can practically express uh, any of your emotions to the instrument. What am I going to do with these dead skins? Am I stuck? Dead skin. And he took three days to answer the question. It was very, uh, he seldom spoke. But when he spoke, it uh, meant tremendous, uh, it, it was very profound. So he knew that I was not giving up, I'm, I was not forgetting. Every morning, I would ask the same question. On the third day, he just briefly gave me one um, answer that he said, if you wish. That's all he said. So I kept on wishing and waiting, <laughs> which, which we refuse to do today. But uh, as uh, I had to put together um, my bio for the website, my son wanted to upload something up there. So to my surprise, I, when I was putting all of the press comments, I was really surprised to see that all of them uh, were commenting on the vocal-like quality and the melodic aspect of my tabla playing. And I was just stuck there. When did this happen? (laughs) So that was uh, a good uh, way to learn that, you know, you just need to learn how to wish properly and how to wait for it. And keep on, keep your mind, your intent together, straight, in the same direction. And one day, it will happen. Mm. 
So today when I perform solos, even in India or over here, people hear um, almost like a vocal performance. And different uh, types of emotions, passages of emotions uh, passing through. And some of them I uh, cultivate, some of them uh, naturally, uh, I will example, you were asking for musical examples. Uh, so um, the f difference between union and separation. Just one simple, how you create uh, expressions to what you are trying to deliver. out of separation. Separation usually comes with a lot of pain and agony, but um, there's beauty in separation too. by men. <laughs> talk, talk to us about this one. Uh, and, uh, this piece I inspired by uh, actually um, a Tang, Tang Dynasty music actually. Uh, Tang Dynasty uh, is a go back to 5th fifth, fifth century. So during the Tang Dynasty uh, the Chinese culture and the arts music is, is, is richest uh, during the, the, the uh, dynasty. So uh, also, you, you hear the, the line when when Jean, when he sol uh, she solo, you will hear there also has uh, because before Chinese music is all uh, mostly a chromatic scale, but uh, uh, but uh, during the Tang Dynasty, because there so the circle road, so we have um, um, a lot of influence by Arabic music, so you will hear. Uh, it's, it's slightly different as pentatonic scale. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
<laughs> Let's see how we're doing. Tell you what, uh, why don't we play one more? And then uh, if anybody wants to ask some questions, you know, we'll keep it open. Yeah, let's play. This is a new piece <laughs> I just decided to write for this band <laughs> called See the World. <laughs> 
could start us off, maybe. Yeah. Okay.
That's okay. <laughs> that was fun. I was going to bring the melody while you guys were in the tempo. I know. Right? Yeah. He I was, was just going to float the melody on top. He was on fire, so I couldn't yeah. stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> stop lying. He was on fire, so. Yeah. Timeless. 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 Yeah, timeless. Well, anyway, we played lots of music and yeah. talked like this. Uh, have a few minutes if somebody would like to ask us something. Oh, our pleasure, our pleasure. Yeah, please. How do you go about uh, composing something for this one? Carefully. Carefully. <laughs> 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 Pitch, very important. Key center, very important. Uh, you have to know, the, you know the, the quality of the musicians. Um, I think uh, even the, of the things that I've chosen of my own to write or, or play with them, there's still some element of them that's still me. <laughs> I, uh, th this last piece I wrote for them, there's no such scale in, in world music. It, there's a little bit of uh, Irish in here. There's a little bit of... A uh, mm -hmm. little bit of uh, Madras, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, Brindamani Sarang <laughs> <laughs> from classical ragas. Oh, yeah, but if you notice, here's a note that doesn't even belong. Way out of all of the musical <laughs> cultures, you know, so that's me. Yeah, and she gave me this to me, then I skipped on most of them. <laughs> she made up the whole thing. I don't know, the no, other composers, because, please. Uh, because I can't find the pitch. The written here, and we talked about these problems. So, so for me, I just ignore the whole thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you're really good. Yes, please. Um, you move physically much more than me do. Is that because, is that a personal thing? Is that come out of musical culture? <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. something that, that's characteristic of me and my playing, and, and I'm not used to playing at this vigorous level sitting down. Can you tell that I want to get out of the, ca the chair? But it just doesn't seem right to be like this. So here I am doing what I feel. Uh, and I like, you know, I am interested in how sound changes when it moves. But is it true that in the other cultures here that mostly the musicians be quite formally, be still Please. silent mm -hmm. in posture? Well, the uh, music is inner energy yeah. in their mind. So uh, <clears throat> uh, if you want to really express, you, there's instruments, like uh, wind instruments especially. They can do that, a uh, lot of uh, melody there. But string player, especially for jitters, it's all about meditation. Yeah, it's like a sphinx. A, it's yeah. not about emotional or expression. Mm -hmm. I don't entertain you at all, but I meditate myself. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you sure? Sure. I'm sorry. So I, should I should say something. No, no. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. Yeah. The uh, mm. when I was performing in Europe, the pitch was so critical. I mean, mm. we have to tune so much on that tune, and I felt like I'm out of tune all the time, no matter how much yeah. you tune to them. <clears throat> And then, of course, I was working with the exper ex uh, experimental musicians, so they are not playing classical music. However, they dealt with the pitch so precisely. And, but as an artist, when I come to the, uh, the piano chord, I hate it. <laughs> I, just, I just can't do this. Mm. And I deliberately off the tune. I like them so much. They can be a very completely tune, but I can be slightly out of it. Oh, mm. that gives me a lot of satisfaction, really. So that's the way I survived. And in America, many musicians, they deal with the textures, not pitch itself, but textures. And in that texture, I can belong very easily. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, my, my instrument um, maybe is a, it's a little less problem like a right. Mongo, yeah, because I have a, a 440 <coughs> tone and uh, it's a chromatic scale. So uh, basically, yeah, I don't have a lot of trouble right. as to Komongo. Yeah. Um, the, 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 for my challenge is, uh, is that um, when I play modern compositions, the uh, different energy and also really very possessed kind of, you know, follow the beats, also uh, meter changes all the time. Western musicians and music, so that that was most the challenge. But uh, uh, basically, yeah, this instrument is is, is good. You understand yeah. how how unique these people are yeah. in terms of uh, the musical worlds that they transverse naturally. Uh, that it's no small thing. I, also, another challenge when I was come to America, uh, especially come to New York ten years ago, I was taught in China not change any notes. You had to follow the, the score and also master taught you. you. You had to follow exactly master taught you. But come to America, especially play ex experimental music at jazz club, you know, for me, I just, uh, challenges, that was before, okay, so no score. Now, I don't know anybody, anyone, that go on the stage to play. <laughs> I always say, do you have a score? Do you have a notes? Nothing. Just play. Yeah, that was a let it go that took me six years to get used to. Of course, and then since I work with uh, the master player here, I learned a lot. Then I, I, um, now I'm comfortable. But it took me more than six years or seven years to get comfortable about it's kind of style, yes. Now I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Couldn't live without it. <laughs> yeah, can I? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a question that's relative to an earlier example on the cycle. And mm -hmm. when you did the 12-beat cycle or 8-beat, you slowed down quite a bit. How did your approach to beat division change when you come down to a very slow tempo? So how do you, like in, in uh, Western music, we play a lot of triplets and 8 notes and 16 notes and crisscross and that kind of stuff. And so this is like a music theory question as much as you know, an improvisation question. Um, obviously at that level, 12 becomes 48, the cycle by itself. And you are looking at 12 measures of force. And you can do anything you want, any kind of... Um, we usually adapt uh, three uh, basic fundamental principles of metric modulations. And you know that's uh, the Indian word for that <laughs> is like curry. It's a different type of curry, another type, you know, Indian spice. So what you do, um, jati, chand, and goon, you apply basically these three uh, principles. But you know, um, going back to, um, the root of the question, when we use a rhythmic cycle in that level of tempo, um, usually uh, we don't do much initially. As the raga is unfolding, you be patient for it to uh, unfold in the full scope and possibility. And then in the later development of the raga, you start interacting with the vocalist and other accompanists. I will give you just a brief example how you move from simple to the more complex. same time.
There you are, the 12th bit. Now, There, uh, once you start the clock, it keeps on ticking. <laughs> With that thought, we'll say thank you to everybody thank here you. and uh, you. Thank for today. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Samir Chatterjee, Lin Xiaofen, Jin Hee Kim. Thank you, Jin. Jin, I have no idea. Okay, okay.